Howdy my totally tubular gamers and we are back with another ranking video. Now today's ranking video is going to be a first person shooter series. It's going to be the Wolfenstein series. Really the granddaddy of the first person shooter. Like first person shooters do not get any older than Wolfenstein. It is one of the most beloved, just straight cherished first person shooter series of all time. And it really was acknowledged as being the series that really got the first person shooter on the map and really it is what it is today thanks to Wolfenstein and of course Doom but Wolfenstein was the first one so I thought hey let's rank all of the first person shooters in the Wolfenstein series but before we get with those rankings here's a few ground rules we will be looking at the first person shooter series of Wolfenstein games so shout out to the original two before Wolfenstein 3D, shout out to the VR game, don't got a VR, can't play it, and shout out to Enemy Territory, as I don't think it goes online anymore, either way, we're looking really at the single player campaigns of the Wolfenstein games, and we will only be looking at one version of each game, I know there's like tons and tons of versions of some of these games, and we're going to be looking at just what is considered the main version of the game. Alright, you got all that? Hopefully you do. I'm really excited, I love the Wolfenstein series, so let's just get started with what I believe is the worst of the Wolfenstein games. And we have Wolfenstein 3D Spear of Destiny as what I believe the worst, just all of Spear of Destiny. I believe that this is the worst Wolfenstein game by quite a bit, and it's the only one on this list that I'd say is truly a pile of crap that is not worth playing at all. At least all the other games on this list have some redeeming value. Now, Wolfenstein 3D has aged quite a bit. I mean, it really was the first first-person shooter, but Spear of Destiny has aged way worse. They took all the aspects from the original Wolfenstein 3D and decided, hey, let's make a whole game about that. Let's make all the shitty parts of the game into an entire game. So, the enemy placement is bad. You get owned immediately. The level design is atrocious. Yeah, literally everything that was bad about the original Wolfenstein 3D, which wasn't all that much, even considering its age, but they just decided to make a whole game about that and this game is just a disaster like this is not fun I've never even come close to finishing this game because it's just horrible these levels are the definition of just like maze like they're just impossible to find honestly like how the hell are you supposed to get through some of these levels like forget it it's just a labyrinth and then the enemies will just destroy you because they're in the most obnoxious places and own you instantly forget choke points you just get choked in this game anyway Wolfenstein 3D, Spear of Destiny, all of it, not a good game, do not recommend. And here we have the latest Wolfenstein, at least at the time of this recording, until Wolfenstein 3 inevitably comes out, and that is Wolfenstein Young Blood, which is the spin-off after Wolfenstein 2. The game stars BJ's twin daughters, who basically go out looking for him after one day BJ just suddenly disappears and doesn't come back, and they steal some armor suits, and well, they're gonna go kill some Nazis and find their daddy. To say that I am not a fan of the two girls in this game would be a fair statement, because I'm not a fan of the protagonists in this game. I think they are very annoying. I mean, I get that they're teenage girls and they're pretty hyped up about whatever, but I'm not a fan of them at all and they're hell yeah dude the setup is decent enough and at the very least it gets the game going but again not a fan of it the gameplay is really what you've come to expect from the modern Wolfenstein games only with some really odd design choices that I don't think like anybody could get behind the shooting is just as great as ever like it's still as fantastic as it was in the previous modern Wolfenstein games however this game decides to introduce Again, big open areas and then tons of objectives like missions, like an RPG or something that you can just pick up from the hub area and then go do in these pseudo open worlds, open environments, and I don't know why they did this. In addition to this, they added experience, leveling up, um, way more skill points than ever before, uh, upgrading weapons, which was kind of there before, but now it's like a way more integral part of the game. And really what all this does is just make the game feel incredibly grindy. This game feels like a wannabe looter shooter. I don't know why the hell they did that for a Wolfenstein game. They added co-op which is cool, however if you're playing alone you have to play with the dumbass AI. 
none of these pseudo RPG Borderlands style aspects are needed for a Wolfenstein game at all and in my opinion it heavily detracts from the overall game is you'll be going through these environments these same environments I might add dozens of times to do these missions and none of them are particularly that engaging sure some of them are fun and hey sometimes when you're just going around killing Nazis left and right and you got no problem it's a pretty good time however for every time that happens there's like two or three times where you just get to a super grindy part where you just shoot the shit out of the same enemy for like a good minute or two because they just have so much health and it's really grindy and you're not the right level or whatever they're trying to be. I don't know why they introduced all this stuff to the Wolfenstein series. I really hope that the upcoming third game doesn't have this because I don't like it. I don't like the grindy aspects. Wolfenstein does not need any of this and it honestly detracts from the game. It's still a decent enough game and I have had some fun with it, I'm not going to lie, but I would say it's near the bottom for my Wolfenstein list. And here we have Wolfenstein, or also known as Wolfenstein 2009 for the PS3, 360, and PC. The game was a reimagining or reboot of Wolfenstein, I guess, in the late 2000s, and it's very reminiscent of the times, I can say that. I would say this is not a bad game, but at its worst is a mediocre game, and it's just one of my less favorable games in the Wolfenstein series. The game once again stars BJ fighting Nazis, only this time they've got some real supernatural shit going on with other dimensions and flaming skulls and just a, again a lot of supernatural stuff here. The shooting is decent enough, but it feels more like Resistance really than Wolfenstein. It feels like a shooter from the late 2000s, that kind of COD inspired shooter and unfortunately I think that makes it age worse than some of the other games on this list honestly. The big gimmick of this game was the other dimension with the medallion. When you use this medallion you go into this hellish nightmarish world or whatever where everything's highlighted that can kill you basically and you can find hidden stuff. Basically it's Arkham Vision from the Arkham games. Honestly, it was pretty OP. I mean, there's no reason to not be in this other dimension where everything's highlighted for you and it's easy to find everything. Like, there's no reason not to be, and I just found that kind of annoying. You get other superpowers throughout the game, like the ability to stop time, absorb bullets, and other kind of powers, and you can just really wipe the floor with this game. Like, you can just destroy these Nazis, and some of the weapons are actually pretty cool in this game, like the Tesla coil. However, I just think that this game ultimately feels pretty generic. I mean, it does have a pseudo open world where like you can explore this open environment before you go to the next mission and find collectibles and stuff like that, but I do not, I'm not a fan of this at all. I think Wolfenstein is best as a linear shooter and I, I don't know what they were trying to do here. It wasn't, wasn't my cup of tea and ultimately the game did just feel pretty generic and pretty by the numbers for a late 2000s shooter and that's why I've got it pretty low on this list because it really left the least impact out of all the games on this list. And here we have the original Wolfenstein 3D. Yep, the one that started it all and you know what I got it decently high on this list and that's pretty good considering its age. This game is aged a lot better than you would think it would. I mean, sure, of course, it looks very dated. All the rooms look the same. Some of the enemy placement sucks, and the shooting could be... It's questionable at best, but this game is still pretty fun, even nowadays. The story is about BJ and, well, he's just gonna kill some Nazis. And, I mean, it ends with, you kill Hitler at the end of the game. It doesn't get any more epic than that for a World War II game, really. It plays pretty basically, but it is pretty easy to understand. I mean, there's only a couple weapons in the game. You open the door, you kill the enemy, you find some keys, you open those doors with the keys, you kill some more Nazis. I mean, there's some supernatural stuff here and there, and it's just a fun time. I will say that some of the levels are a little maze-like, but obviously nowhere near as bad as Spear of Destiny. And for the most part, the level design is decent enough, and you can figure out where you're supposed to go pretty easily. It's not like a cluster like some other games from this era, particularly other shooters. And the shooting is still pretty fun, and you know what? Gunning down these Nazis will never be old. I mean, the sprite work is still pretty good these days, and I don't have all that much to say about it, but what can really be said? I mean, it was revolutionary, it was extremely innovative, it changed the game, literally. And we wouldn't be here today without this game, but even in 2021, it's still an enjoyable time. And I have no problem recommending it if you want to play an old school shooter. 
The next game on our list is Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, which takes place after the New Order, also developed by Machine Games. Now I know that this game is a bit divided amongst the Wolfenstein fanbase, however, I can say I'm confidently in the camp that enjoys the game. The game, like I said, takes place after the New Order and sees BJ and crew trying to take back America, well, really the world from the Nazis after that first rebellion of the first game. I can say that the story plays a very big role in this game, much more than really any other Wolfenstein game ever made, and that's what's really divided some fans in the fanbase, as they don't really care all that much for the story, but I can say that I am personally a fan of it. Sure, it's not perfect, it's not even all that great, I'll be the first to admit it, but I like how cheesy and kind of quirky it is. It's definitely odd and different from most first-person shooter stories, and yeah, there's some flaws here, and the pacing is kind of off, and some of the tones, and just really general odd humor doesn't really fly with me, but again, I still quite like the story. At the very least, I can say that the story is interesting and is able to set up a lot of interesting set pieces that make for very good levels, and some of the most unique levels I've ever seen in a Wolfenstein game, that's for sure. The gameplay is very solid as it builds heavily on the new order and features many new weapons and new aspects to the gameplay. You can still be stealthy if you want in most of these encounters, but I mean, why are you going to do that? It's Wolfenstein. Anyway, you go around killing lots of Nazis. All, all the weapons feel great to use, they're all satisfying, they're all heavy, they're loud. It's all the great stuff you'd want from a first person shooter. I'd say there's no bad weapon in the game. All the encounters are set up in a really nice, interesting way, and engaging the Nazis is never not a great time, honestly. Everything feels great, it's violent, it's gory, it's what you'd want from a Nazi killing game. And the gameplay, arguably, is better than the New Order and the Old Blood. It really is. However, this game is not better than those games for a big reason. And that is the gameplay to cutscene ratio. There is way too many cutscenes in this game. Even though I do think the story is fine, it is a bit trashy, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's fine. There is way too many cutscenes, especially for a Wolfenstein game. If you skip all the cutscenes in this game and just do the gameplay, the game is like three and a half hours long. Maybe even shorter if you're really good at it, which is just kind of ridiculous. Like, why is there so many cutscenes in this game? I get that they're trying to tell the story, but there does not need to be this much story in the game. Like, there should be way more interesting levels than all these sort of okay cutscenes. It really holds the entire game back, which is a shame, because the gameplay, I think, might be the best of the modern Wolfenstein games. Either way, though, it still is an enjoyable time, and hey, if you get really into the story, I guess then you'll like all those cutscenes, but there is too many of them. Still, though, it is a decently good game. The next game on our list is Wolfenstein The New Order, the first of the modern reboot Wolfenstein series, and I got this game when it came out, I was very excited for it, and all these years later, I'm still pretty excited for it, as I think it is a very solid game, it's a very good game. The story might arguably be the most interesting story in the entire Wolfenstein series. It really might be. Taking place at the end of World War II, it sees BJ get some shrapnel put into his head and he basically gets put into a coma for around a decade or so. Anyway, after he wakes up, he finds out that the Nazis actually won World War II. They won World War II and took over the world, which is, that's pretty interesting, and BJ, he ain't gonna have none of that. And BJ, well... Yeah, BJ really hates Nazis, and so he's going to go on a rampage and kill them. And killing Nazis is the name of the game here, as it is a fantastic time. Like, this game really just changed the entire Wolfenstein game for the better. With superb level design, interesting encounters, different approaches to some encounters, and just awesome weapons. Like, this is everything you'd want, really, in a shooter, again, because it's just so much fun to go around killing these dudes. Like... It's super satisfying. The enemies, they die, it's bloody, it's really engaging. They added the ability to be stealthy in these environments, and well, I mean, I did that a little bit, I'm not gonna lie, I tried it out, but that's not really what Wolfenstein is known for. It's known for going around killing everyone, but the stealth is here, and if you want to do it, you can do it. And the game felt more like an old school shooter than that 2009 Wolfenstein with health pickups and no weapon limit, and you could just go around murdering everybody. The biggest thing that the New Order set out to do was make you feel like a badass. They really want you to feel like a badass like those old school first person shooters and really this game was one of the games that really brought back that whole like old school badass feeling first person shooter and you know what the gameplay to story like the ratio there it's very well done as they still have a decent amount of cutscenes but it doesn't take over the game like Wolfenstein 2 
it's a fair amount and there's still a bunch of gameplay here. If you like first person shooters old or new and you haven't played this game still after all these years I really am questioning what's going on here like what are you waiting for the game's dirt cheap and it's still just as good now as it was all those years ago. And for the number two best Wolfenstein we have the prequel which is Wolfenstein the Old Blood. The game sees BJ going to Castle Wolfenstein to find plans on where Wilhelm Strauss is, which is actually how the New Order begins. And that's pretty much the story. I mean, it doesn't do all that much, and it doesn't need to. It saves all that interesting story stuff for the New Order and focuses much more on the gameplay. And the gameplay in The Old Blood is easily the best of the modern Wolfenstein games. One big reason why it's the best is because there's the most gameplay in this of all the Modern Wolfenstein games. It's like the length of the New Order, however there's basically almost no cutscenes, so you're just going around grinding Nazis into bones really. You're just annihilating them the entire time. The game throws way more combat encounters at you than any of the other Wolfenstein games, and yeah, you could be stealthy if you want, but it's way more interesting to go around just killing everything that moves, which is what I do. I love this shit. Like around the halfway mark, they actually bring some zombies in and some other supernatural stuff. And you know what? It doesn't feel totally out of place here either. Like it's done to such an extent that it's like, hey, this isn't totally crazy. But you know what? Fighting these zombies is just as good as fighting the Nazis. I mean, it just doesn't get old, honestly. And no matter how many times I've played through this game, it's always a blast. It really is. I'd argue that it's one of the best, if not the best, modern first-person shooter to come out in the last, I'd say, five to ten years it's really that good it's a great time but it's not my favorite Wolfenstein game it's not what I think is the best Wolfenstein game and I think the best Wolfenstein game is Return to Castle Wolfenstein which came out in the early 2000s and well this is just a superb first-person shooter they came out really at a time when every first-person shooter it seems was superb okay not every but it was definitely the golden age of first-person shooters and here was Return to Castle Wolfenstein sitting atop that mountain. It really just is about BJ messing up some Nazis and it doesn't get any better than that and the story really takes some interesting twists and turns. At one point zombies show up, monsters show up, like ghouls, the Nazis are working on mutants with machine gun arms, like it's some sci-fi crazy shit. They got the SS out here with some leather bound babes trying to kill you, like this is some good stuff. I mean, even at the end of the game, this undead general, he literally comes out of the grave to come and kill BJ. Like, this shit gets crazy, and you know, I love it, I love it, I love it. I love how crazy this game gets. It goes off the walls, it's insane, and it's just such a great time. All the combat encounters are challenging. All of them are interesting. They're all varied. There are tons of different locations, weapons, enemy types, you name it, it's here. You go from Castle Wolfenstein itself to other Nazi labs to graveyards to just all over the place. Like, I can't even begin to describe all the different locations in this game, and they all make for superb levels. They really do. And fighting these enemies, it just doesn't get any better than this in a first person shooter. Like, it's really at the top tier of first person shooter combat. Every encounter is challenging, every encounter is engaging, every weapon is great to use, every enemy is different to fight. It really is just the pinnacle of first person shooters. This game just really never gets old and it's always able to stay interesting thanks to everything that I mentioned. I will say it's not perfect and parts of it may have aged questionably like there's two stealth segments in the game that are just not good. They're not good, there's no other way to say that. But the rest of the game I think is aged very beautifully. The game still runs great, uh, even on modern computers, and if you haven't played it by now, why? Why have you not? Like, when it comes to first-person shooters, this is easily in my top 10 favorite first-person shooters. I love Return to Castle Wolfenstein, and it really is the apex of the entire series, and I doubt that a Wolfenstein game will ever be as good as Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Maybe I'm just a boomer at heart and loves his old school first person shooter, but I really do just love Return to Castle Wolfenstein. But that's the end of this video. What's your guys' favorite Wolfenstein game or series or whatever you want to tell me? You know what, you just tell me whatever you want in the comments and I'm here to listen. With that said, thank you for watching. Please subscribe, please like, please comment, please share, please do whatever the hell you want. Please dislike even, just so it gets some more attention. Have a great Christmas, Valentine's Day, all that great stuff. 
whatever holiday you're closer to celebrating. See you.